Hey everyone, welcome back to the church building. I'm Andy and we are reading through the entire Bible, cover to cover. And we are in the book of Job. First chapter, we just finished up Esther and now we're in Job. Very well-known story, I would say. But I think this is the first time I've actually read it, uh, the raw text, completely through. And we're going to read through chapter 4 today. So let's dive right in. There once was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people in the east. His sons used to go and hold feasts in one another's houses in turn, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the feast days had run their course, Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This is what Job always did. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not put a fence around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. Verse 11. But stretch out your hand now and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, all that he has is in your power. Only do not stretch out your hand against him. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. One day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell on them and carried them off and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns, made a raid on the camels and carried them off, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was speaking, still speaking, another came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind came across the desert, struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. I alone have escaped to tell you. Verse 20. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshipped. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrongdoing. Chapter 2. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. 
verse 7. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a pot shard with him with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all these troubles that had come upon him, each of them set out from his home, Eliphaz, Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite. They met together to go and console and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him, and they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore their robes and threw dust in the air upon their heads. They sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. Chapter 3. After Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth, Job said, Let the day perish in which I was born, and the night that said a man-child is conceived. Let that day be, in, be darkness. May God above not seek it or light shine on it. Let gloom and deep darkness claim it. Let clouds settle upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. That night, let thick darkness seize it. Let it not rejoice among the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Yes, let that night be barren. Let no joyful cry be heard in it. Let those curse it who curse the sea, those who are skilled to rouse up Leviathan. Let the stars of its dark, of its dawn be dark. Let the stars of its dawn be dark. Let it hope for light, but have none. May it not see the eyelids of the morning, because it did not shut the doors of my mother's womb and hide trouble from my eyes. Why did I not die at birth, come forth from the womb, and expire? Why were there knees to receive me, or breasts for me to suck? Now I would be lying down, and quiet I would be asleep. Then I would be at rest with kings and counselors of the earth, who rebuild ruins for themselves or with princes who have gold, who fill their houses with silver? Or why was I not buried like a stillborn child, like an infant that never sees the light? There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary are at rest. There the prisoners are at ease together, they do not hear the voice of the taskmaster. The small and the great are there, and the slaves are free from their masters. Why is light given to one in misery? and life to the bitter in soul, who long for death, but it does not come, and dig for it more than for hidden treasures, who rejoice exceedingly, and are glad when they find the grave. Why is light given to one who cannot see the way whom God has fenced in? For my sighing comes like my bread, and my groanings are poured out like water, Truly, the thing that I fear comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, but trouble comes. Chapter 4 Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, If one ventures a word with you, will you be offended? But who can keep from speaking? See, you have instructed many. You have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have supported those who are stumbling, and you have made firm the feeble knees. But now it has come to you, and you are impatient. It touches you, and you are dismayed. Is not your fear of God your confidence and the integrity of your ways your hope? Think now who that was innocent ever perished, or where were the upright cut off? As I have seen... Those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they are consumed. The roar of the lion, the voice of the fierce lion, and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The strong lion perishes for lack of prey, and the whelps of the lioness are scattered. 
Now a word came stealing to me, my ear received the whisper of it, amid thoughts from visions of the night. When deep sleep falls on mortals, dread came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones shake. A spirit glided past my face, the hair of my flesh bristled. It stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence. Then I heard a voice. Can mortals be righteous before God? Can human beings be pure before their maker? Even in his servants, he puts no trust. And angels he charges with error. How much more those who live in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed like a moth. Between morning and evening they are destroyed, they perish forever without any regarding it. Their tent cord is plucked up within them. They die devoid of wisdom. Let me just check out chapter 5 and see if we can cruise along here. I think we'll stop there because it's, it's going to shift gears in, in chapter five. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, join me next time for more Job and uh, have a great day.